Well, 2024 is almost here and there's so many coffee machines that are coming on the market, it's hard to keep up. So I'm doing this brand new series of under $1,000, 1000 to three, three to six, six plus, all the different types of machines at every single budget. So not everyone has endless amounts of money to spend on a coffee machine, nor do they prioritize it. So in this particular video, I'm gonna look at all of the best machines that I recommend that come in under $1,000. So let's check it out. So coffee tech is coming up so fast and everyone wants all the special features, the bells and whistles, but they add up in price quite quickly. So what do you do to try and get the price that you want under $1,000 but with all of those features that are super important to you. Well, you watch this entire video for one and you hit that little like button just to show me that I'm doing the right thing. So go ahead and test that. I'm waiting, I trust you. Okay, let's move on. Let's look at the first machine, which is really, really nice, cheap machine. However, it does require a bit of manual labor and that is the Pico Presso. Now the Pico Presso from Wakeco is one of my favorite manual espresso machines. It's so portable, literally fits in the palm of your hand, could fit in your back pocket, but it doesn't take up any room in your luggage if you're traveling a lot and if you're going camping or on day hikes. It's absolutely fantastic for all of those situations and it delivers an exceptional espresso coffee on its own with minimal amount of effort. Yes, you do have to fiddle around with it a little bit, but, and obviously you have to hand pump it, but you get a great espresso, almost as good as you would from the commercial coffee machine. And at such a low price, it's about $100 US, which is super cheap. And all you need to have is a bit of ground coffee, a bit of hot water and some muscles in your arm. And then you can make the best espresso. There's also some accessories that you can purchase that are Wakeco specific for this machine specifically. The stand, which is a foldable stand, perfect. It just gives you stability and I did a full video on that and you can watch that here. As well as they're bringing out a gauge shortly. And this will really change this machine dramatically because it's very hard to know what exact pressure you're applying to the extraction. And so by having an external gauge gives you the reading and lets you know, all right, I need to be pumping harder or I need to pull back on the pumping to maintain that perfect extraction. There are other machines by Wakeco like the Nano Presso. However, having purchased both of those, I will never use the Nano Presso again. I think it's the very poor sister of the Pico Presso, but it just doesn't deliver anywhere near as good a coffee as the Pico Presso. Now, a lot of you are probably saying, well, I wanna do milk, and this machine doesn't do milk, so why am I watching this video? Well, I can tell you milk is the least of your problems. It's very easy. You can literally just steam it up in the microwave, get a little plunger, get a little nano foamer, and then texturize it, and then you've got yourself a latte. Don't be put off just because this machine doesn't deliver milk straight out of the box. It's so easy, and the coffee that you get from it outweighs most of the other appliance machines on the market that are hundreds of dollars more that do deliver the steam. And I really think it is worth considering this if you're looking for a really awesome extraction on a really low budget. So let's look at the pros. Fantastic, and I would say one of the best coffee extractions on a portable device, actually on really any cheap espresso machine, this delivers the best espresso. It's super compact, super portable, high quality, comes fully packed with all the little features, including a WDT tool, which is not the best, which is, you know, it's pretty much just a filament of wire, but you can always use it and carry it with you. A coffee catcher, a tamper, and then obviously your other accessories as well. The cons, it's a little bit fussy when it comes to knocking out the grinds after you've extracted your shot. It's not the easiest one because often you have to pull out the little basket. It's a bit hot because you've freshly made it, so it's got boiling water in there, and that can be a little bit frustrating to knock it out. And sometimes you have to just get a spoon in there and really clean it out, especially if you've done the grinds too fine. Other than that, there's really no cons to this machine, and it's my recommendation that you go out and purchase a Pico Presso if you've got a really tight budget. I give it an overall score of 9 out of 10. Right, 
Next on my list is an appliance machine. Now, I don't normally recommend appliance machines. However, after seeing a survey done recently with James Hoffman, he asked all of his YouTube users what budget they have for espresso machine. And the overwhelming, most popular budget was under $500. So that's why I've gone and made this video to showcase a couple of the appliance machines that I really rate. If you have to go out and buy an appliance machine, then you should look at these ones. And the first on my list is the DeLonghi Stilosa. Now, the DeLonghi is a fantastic brand and they make a bunch of different appliance machines for super automatics, and they even have a competitor to the Breville Dual Boiler. But this particular one is very, very unique in the sense that you can actually pimp it out a little bit. If you have a certain model, it has a Pinarello, you can take this off and you've got a new steamer one underneath, which gives you a lot more control over your milk. You can also upgrade the porter filter to a naked porter filter and take out the pressurized baskets and put in some precision baskets. And then you'll really start to notice the big difference in the quality of your espressos because it has a stainless steel boiler that goes up to about 15 bars of pressure, which allows you to get that full nine bar extraction at the group head, which a lot of the appliance machines don't have. They don't have enough power to really push through the coffee. And that usually means you have to coarsen the grinds, which results in a weaker under extracted coffee. Whereas the Stilosa allows you to grind as fine as you would do on a commercial machine almost, and the pressure behind it pumps it through. And if you remove the pressurized basket and put in another basket, you actually get a really, really nice espresso every single time. Now, the thing to note is that there are actually two models of the Stilosa. One is a 54 mil size, and the other one is a 51 mil size porter filter. I actually recommend you get the model EC260 as opposed to the model EC230. The reason is, because of the size of the porter filter. It's much easier to find a naked porter filter size that's 51 mil rather than the 54 mil because most of the 54 mil ones are designed for the Breville and they have an extra ear on the porter filter, it means it doesn't actually fit into the DeLonghi. So there's something to be aware of. Make sure that you're purchasing the right model. And you can really easily identify it from the picture if you don't have the model number. The EC260, it actually is a lot thicker on the steam wand than the other model, which is the 230, which has a really thin steam wand. Even though it does better milk, it actually doesn't have the better porter filter size. They're both super cheap, around about $190 US. This is the sort of machine that I could easily recommend you go out and buy a $50 second hand from Marketplace, Facebook Marketplace. I bought mine for $50 on Facebook Marketplace and then I pimped it out and you can watch that whole video here if you wanna go down that path. But it's a fantastic machine and I recommend if you just don't have the budget, make sure that you do check out the DeLonghi Stilosa. So the pros are that it's cheap, cheap, cheap. You can buy it literally anywhere. There's so many secondhand ones available that I don't think anyone would miss out on this machine. It's got a powerful boiler, enough pressure to really cut through the grinds, make your extraction taste awesome. And it's pimpable, which means that you can buy a whole bunch of accessories, just make sure you're looking in the right size, but there's a whole bunch of things that you can do to really improve the quality of your extraction and your coffees overall for not that much. The cons, uh, is that it's an appliance machine. So the durability is pretty low. You might get two to five years out of this. If you're lucky, you might get seven years. I've heard of people going up to 10 years, but it's unusual and it obviously depends on how many coffees you're gonna use. So I would say give it about three years on average the lifespan of this machine. So it's not a super long machine, it's not gonna last you a lifetime and it's a great entryway of getting better coffees. And the other cons are that it, out of the box, it's pretty average. For the EC230 model, there aren't a great amount of accessories. So I would make sure that you get the 260 model. I give it a four out of 10 straight out of the box and a seven out of 10 when you pimp it out. Thank you for watching the video so far. I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button, maybe send it to a mate who's also interested in looking at coffee machines. Just help spread the word, helps grow my channel so I can continue making awesome videos that hopefully you find enjoyable. 
Now last year, when I did this video, I recommended you get the Breville Dual Boiler. It is one of my favorite machines for the appliance brands. I think they really nailed it with the Dual Boiler. It makes such great quality coffee. Because of the Dual Boiler, it means you can do steam milk and make espressos simultaneously, which is a great advantage for a lot of people just in a rush to get going. The ease of use, the silkiness of the milk, the quick startup time makes it a fantastic model. And it came in under $1,000 at the time. Now, however, it's gone a little bit over $1,000, but what I also found out is that Breville have a pricing structure which varies from country to country. So while here in Australia, it only costs us $1,000, in the US and other places overseas, I've seen prices of two and a half thousand dollars, which just makes it ridiculously overpriced. And I don't recommend that you go out and buy an appliance brand for two and a half thousand dollars when there's so many other great machines out there with commercial grade quality coffee equipment that will last you 20 years for the same price. So I'm sorry for all you Breville Dual Boiler people out there that are fans of this machine. This is not on my list this year. However, Breville still made the list with one of their newer releases called the Bambino and the Bambino Plus. The Bambino base model costs 299 and the Plus is 499 and they're very similar in terms of what the functionality is. I'll buy just a few advances in the Plus and it comes in nine colors as opposed to just the brushed aluminium look that the base model has. So both machines have a super quick heat up time. They literally take three seconds and they're ready to go. However, if you've watched any of the other videos, you'll know that three seconds is not enough time to heat up the portafilter itself. And the portafilter needs to be burning hot before you start extracting your coffees because otherwise all of the energy goes into heating the portafilter and not extracting your coffee nicely. So three seconds, whatever, doesn't make a difference. You're still going to need to wait about 10 minutes for that portafilter to be absolutely piping hot for you to use. The other features on this machine are pretty fantastic. They both have PID controllers, which gives you temperature stability, meaning that your coffee is going to be extracted at the relatively same temperature every time, much better than some of the other machines that don't have a PID. The other thing is that this allows you to do pre-infusion. However, that's an advanced technique. And if you're starting out in coffee, I would recommend you turning the, the pre-infusion right down to zero or as close to zero as possible. And you can do manual extractions or volumetric extractions as well. They're both pretty compact as well. They're about 20 centimeters wide and about 40 centimeters long with the plus being a little bit bigger, not much, but a couple of centimeters bigger. And the real difference between the two machines is in the steaming of the milk. You see with the plus, you get an automatic frother. And that means that you can just put your milk in, chuck the steam one in the top, and then press the button to your desired texture. So you might wanna go cappuccino or a flat white, and then it will do it and shut it off then you pull it out and it purges all the steam on its own, which is a fantastic handy feature. And it knows the temperature that you set as well. When you place the milk jug onto the drip tray, there's a little temperature sensor there. So when it hits the desired temp, it turns it off and then your milk's ready. The downside to this, and actually if I was gonna choose either one of these machines, I would probably choose the base model Bambino because it's $200 US cheaper, which is a significant amount. And for the milk frothing is actually better on the base one because with the plus model, you can't actually manually steam milk that easily. You can do it, but it's not as flexible. It's just a bit bulky. It's not as easy to do unless you're absolutely against learning how to steam milk or anything like that. Why would you spend $200 more just to get that benefit when you can do it all just very easily with a few little lessons you could make perfectly silky milk on the base model anyway. The only other reason that you would buy the Plus is if you wanted one of the nine colors that it comes in because the base model only comes in the brushed aluminum. For me, there's just not enough in the Plus to really justify that extra $200, but you be the judge. The pros are it's a very slim footprint. It's super easy to use, super speedy, great milk, the really good part about it is that it has PID and pre-infusion built in, and at that price, that's really, really good. And the cons are really just the plus doesn't really give you the bang for the buck. That's my only downside to it, other than it is appliance machine. So again, expectations about durability and longevity have to be measured. You just need to allow three, maybe five years in your budget to upgrade to a different model. So that's it for the Bambino and the Bambino Plus. I think the Bambino Plus gives a six out of 10 for me, 
just because I think it's overpriced for what it gives. And the Bambino base model really gives me a seven out of 10 because I think it's a much better machine at that level. Now the next machine might actually be the steel of 2024 because it hasn't quite hit the market yet, but what it is saying it's gonna deliver is unheard of in the budget espresso machines. It's Turin's Legato Espresso Machine. Now Turin is a company that's come out of China recently. In about 2021, they started getting into coffee grinders and they've had a lot of success with the DF64, DF83 and a whole bunch of other grinders. They're really, really popular in the specialty coffee industry. Now they've turned their eyes onto coffee machines and the Turin Legato looks amazing. It only comes in at $499 US but it packs in all the features that you want on a higher end machine, like the PID, the pre-infusion. It looks beautiful. It's 58 mil commercial grade quality stainless steel boiler. And the other thing that I really think is unique to this machine is that it has a thermo block steamer, which means that it can do the steam instantly without having to boil it up like you would do on some of the other machines where the single boiler is controlling the temperature of the extraction and the temperature of the steam, which means you have to wait for it to boil up to get steam and drop down to do your extractions. Well, with the thermo block, you have instant capabilities, which means you can do simultaneously the extraction and steam your milk. So whilst I haven't got my hands on it on paper, this looks like to be the best machine in 2024 under a thousand dollars the pros are super cheap reliable commercial grade 58 mil packed full of features like the pid and pre-infusion the thermoblock steamer just packed full of features cons are it's not super interesting it's really the main biggest con i have is that it's unproven we don't know what this machine's going to be like how durable it's going to be how consistent it's going to be how reliable it's going to be we don't know anything like that but based on what turin have already done with their grinders i can expect that it's going to be fairly high quality and i think it should last a fairly long time as well yeah obviously there's nothing super special about the look either it's pretty much just a stainless steel but Overall, I reckon this is a 9 out of 10 if it lives up to its potential. The next machine I haven't ever put on one of my lists. It's by a company called Quick Mill, and it's the Quick Mill Pippa. Sounds like Peppa Pig's cousin who works as the fastest corn miller in the town. Coffee for Daddy Pig and me. But it's actually an Italian manufacturer and they have a really high quality machine and they've been manufacturing coffee machines for quite some time now. And the Quick Mill Pippa really stands out for one of the best budget espresso machines on the market. At $800 US, it is on the higher end of the budget. However, what it delivers is a really delicious looking coffee machine. It's black matte. You can get it in multiple versions, but the black matte with the timber accents on it look incredible. And instead of the normal standard press buttons, it actually has rocker switches, which just makes it look really, really sexy. I think it's awesome that this machine is so cheap for what it delivers. It's nothing overly advanced in its features or anything, but it really is a reliable, solid machine that actually looks really different from all of the other stainless steel, brushed aluminium looks of a lot of the other machines at this price point. It's 58 mil, commercial grade portafilter, stainless steel, cool touch steam one, which I think is really useful. And also it has a side reservoir for the water, which actually is unique because a lot of the places put it at the back or at the top. Not only can you just pull it out partially to fill it, refill it if you need to, you can pull it out fully to take it to the sink and fill it up there. And it eliminates the risk of pouring water onto your machine accidentally when you're trying to fill up your reservoir on top of the machine. Believe me, it happens a lot. It does take a little longer to heat up, about 10 minutes and then another two minutes if you wanna do steam. It doesn't have your features like your PIDs in there for temperature stability, but at least it does give you really reliable quality coffee. So the pros are that it comes in the different colors with really nice accents as well. The rocker switches that look just gorgeous, the cool touch steam wand and the side access to the water reservoir. The cons are that it's a little bit slower to heat than some of the other machines and it lacks a lot of the features that the other machines have in there as well. I give it an eight out of 10 overall. I still think it's a fantastic machine. Let me know if you have one or if you purchase one, let me know how it goes. Now this next machine is a classic. It's literally called the classic. It's by Gadgia. And they have two models, but the one I'm gonna talk about, it's the Gadgia Classic Evo Pro. They have been around forever. Gadgia were one of the first machines ever 
in Nespresso. So they know what they are doing, been around more than 100 years now, and they have really not gone away from their classic. So even though this is the Evo, which gives you a few extra features like auto shut off timers and just a few better things in terms of the actual engineering behind it, there's not a lot of upgrades in the difference. It's about $100 more than the normal classic, but they're all 58 mil Porterfielder commercial grade stainless steel. It's quite a classic design, comes in multiple colors, red, blue, black, white, stainless steel. It's just a solid machine with a couple of rocker switches as well for LED backlit rocker switches as well, just to finish off the design. It's nothing exceptional in to look at, and in it does lack a bit of the tech that some of the other machines do. However, the advantage of having less tech means it doesn't have a computer board behind it, which means it has less chance of blowing up, needing to be replaced. A few services every maybe six years, this machine could go on 20 plus years, and that's proven because there are already machines out there in the marketplace that have been longer than 30 years that are still running and making exceptional espresso today. <laughs> it does require, however, a steep learning curve in how to use it. This machine and the next one I'm gonna talk about do require a bit of finessing and what we call temperature surfing to get the desired extraction. But if you're willing to sink your teeth into learning how to really extract good high quality coffee, then these machines, you're never gonna look back. The pros are for this machine is that it's durable. It's proven history, shows you how good the coffee can be and how long you're gonna be able to get this machine to last. It's a beautiful color designs. It doesn't need all the bells and whistles, but you can actually mod it because there's a huge modding community. So you can buy different mods to stabilize the temperature, to upgrade certain parts. The community that is behind it are so active, so helpful that you can dive into there and ask all the dumb questions that you might not want to ask or that you might feel embarrassed asking. And the support network will lift you up and give you all that information without judgment. Once you've learned to temp surf, you are never going to look back. There's really no cons on this machine other than maybe it doesn't have all the tech features that some people might like. But for the price, you get a machine that will last you an entire lifetime or until you upgrade, you could hand it down to your generations after you and still this machine will continue to put out the best quality coffee. So 10 out of 10 for me on these machines. I love them, I hope you do too. Now we're getting close to the top of our budget with the upgraded version of Lelite's Anna. Now, Lelite is an Italian manufacturer. It's been around a long time and they have a huge range. So I've actually got Lelite in pretty much every one of these videos at their different price points. But the Anna is really fantastic because $899 without the PID and I think $999 with the PID, which is a temperature stabilizer. So really good for getting your water consistently. Don't have to worry about temperature surfing. And I think the Anna is a really good fit. It's a small model. It's not the sexiest looking machine, like it is just a chrome stainless steel finish, but what it delivers under the hood is where that really counts. And so, I think for anyone wanting to get into coffee with a really easy way in with the PID is my preference. Now, the other thing to really be aware of with this machine is that it doesn't have your standard 58 mil porta filters. It has 57 mil porta filters. I don't know why they decided to do that, but it does make it difficult for you if you're purchasing one to go and find accessories that fit the 57 mil because most accessories out there like your tampers, your puck screens, your precision baskets and your precision screens all use 58 mil. So just be aware that when you're purchasing this machine, you are gonna have to look for 57 mil accessories. It's a small price to pay, but the machine itself is fantastic. And I bet if you purchased one, that wouldn't be an issue for you to have to search for those specific accessories. One of the great things about this upgraded version is that it comes with the cool touch wand. The older models don't have that. And some of the other machines in this price range don't have the cool touch function as well just means you have to be a little bit more careful about where you grab the steam wand so you don't burn yourself. It is just a straightforward vibratory pump, so it's not going to be the quickest to start up. But as I said, it doesn't really matter how fast it starts up. You need to make sure that that portafilter is piping hot. So that's going to take you 10 minutes, which is about the time that this machine takes to wake up in the morning anyway. So you could get yourself a little automated timer and start it before you hopped up. That way it's ready to go by the time you're ready to drink. So the pros are super high quality, commercial grade quality equipment used inside it. It has the rocker switches, the PID, the cool touch wand, whole bunch of features that are really fantastic for a lot of newbies. And it's very, very affordable. 
It will last you 15 plus years as well, which I think is a fantastic upside to a lot of these machines. And even at this price point, you can still get a machine to last that long is fantastic. The cons are that it is 57 mil instead of 58, that it doesn't have a whole bunch of the other tech that some of the other machines do. And also the steam one only has one hole in it, which means that it does take a little bit longer to steam and it's a little bit more difficult to steam to get that silkiness. But with a bit of an adjustment and a bit of playing around with it, that won't be an issue for you. Overall, I give it an eight out of 10 and let's check out the next machine. And let's get on to our final machine right at the top end of our budget sitting at that 999 US dollar mark and it is the Rancilio Silvia. Now I'm not going to go too deep into the Rancilio Silvia here because it actually sits a little bit into the 1k plus mark so I'll do a bigger review on that machine in my 1 to 3k machines but just to say that the Rancilio Silvia is one of the very first home espresso machines to go out into the market. It used to be that you buy a Ranchilio commercial machine for your cafe and they gifted you these machines for your home. They are all commercial grade, 58 mil, stainless steel boiler, stainless steel porter filter. It doesn't have all the bells and whistles, very similar to the Gaggia Classic. I think the Gaggia Classic is slightly better than the Ranchilio in my opinion, although I do have a soft spot for Ranchilio because it was the first machine that I ever purchased. It has a 300 mil brass boiler a two liter water tank it will produce endless amounts of steam but the downsides for me are that the water does come through the same steam wand that the steam comes through and you have to turn it over and wait for it to heat up and cool down it's a little bit annoying but once you have the process this machine can deliver perfect extractions. And I have people who have had these machines for 15 plus years and never skipped a beat without any services either. So the pros are that it's nice and cheap under $1,000 US, built to last, reliable, fantastic quality extractions. Cons are there's no tech, no PID, no pre-infusion, no volumetrics, there's no pressure gauge. So you can't actually identify what's going on at the machine to know if you're getting the right pressure. You just have to judge it so this is a little bit more for your experienced baristas however if you're willing to put in the time and effort you can really make this machine sing i give it a 9 out of 10 and that is my entire list for this year of all the best espresso machines to purchase under 1k i'm ryan your coffee coach i hope you enjoyed this video and as always enjoy your brew